Hey everyone, Chris here and welcome to my channel. For today's Five on Friday, I'm going to share with you my next round of five star predictions. Yes, it is that time again. It is time for my last round of five star predictions of 2022. In keeping with a theme of 2022, I am going to make this round all sequels. I thought it would be fun to do sequels this time around to really help me focus on working on as many series as possible as we come up on the end of the year. If you've been following my channel, you know I've been making a priority to work on my series this year because I'm just in the middle of way too many of them. So I thought this was a great way to combine my five-star predictions and my series goals. So first up is Stellar Loon by Shannon Messenger. This is the ninth book in the Keeper of the Lost City series. I don't have it yet because it hasn't come out yet, but it's coming out, I believe, on November 9th. You have no idea how excited I am for this book. I can't even begin to put it in words. I have been doing Keeper Along, which is hosted by Pris from Press Bruises. I'll link her channel in the Twitter below. And I've absolutely adored getting to do my reread and hearing everybody's thoughts on the books. And I'm very excited for Unlock's live show because we're kind of going to get to discuss all of our theories and thoughts about what's going to happen in Stellar Loon right before we read Stellar Loon. It's also been a great refresher on everything that happened in the series and the order events took place. And I am so incredibly excited for Stellar Loon. I've given every book in this series five stars. And well, I have no reason to believe that Stellar Loon will be the exception to the rule. So Stellar Loon is the first book on my five-star predictions list for this round. Next is The Final Gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the third book in the Inheritance games. And this follows a girl named Avery who got left a like fortune from a billionaire who cut out his two daughters and his four grandsons. And there's conditions on how she gets this inheritance. And her thing is, she's never met the man before. She has no idea why this complete stranger would leave his entire inheritance to her. And I really enjoyed kind of piecing things together and puzzling things out with Avery and seeing her interactions with the dead man's family and getting to know his family. And again, puzzling out with Avery what these people did to get disinherited. And I cannot wait to finish this series. I've really, really loved it way more than I was expecting to. And so it seemed like a no-brainer to hope that the conclusion to this trilogy would be five-star worthy. So fingers crossed. And if nothing else, I will be crossing off a series because I will have completed the series. So it's a win-win. Next is Amari and the Great Game by B.B. Austin. So this is the second book in the Supernatural Investigation series. Maybe? I think it's something like that. And in the first book, we follow Amari, whose brother kind of disappeared, and nobody seems to know what happens to him, and she ends up finding some clues that lead her to chasing him down. I absolutely adored book one, and I cannot wait to dive into book two and see what Amari gets up to in this one and continue on with her journey and learning more about what is happening in her world and what new things she encounters in this one, because the first one was just so good that I was very sad when I finished that one and couldn't read the second one. So here's hoping this is another five-star read. Then, in what will be a shock to no one who's watched these videos, I've got Defend the Dawn by Bridget Kemmerer. I'm pretty sure that she's found, like, four of these? With this being the fourth, maybe? Because I know I did Forging Silver into Stars. I did Defy the Night, which is the first book in this series, and I'm pretty sure I did the last book in the Curse Breaker series as a five-star prediction. So yeah, no, no surprise that she's on here. So in this series, we have two POVs. We have Tessa, who is a normal girl who is just kind of going about her life, and then we have Prince Korg. In the Kingdom of Kandala, they're dealing with a kind of plague. There is a sickness going around, and there is a very specific treatment that you can take, but as the prince and, of course, his brother, the king, have to deal with the fact that they're trying to figure out a fair way to distribute it to the entire kingdom and how to do that fairly, especially when they've got to deal with other kingdoms. And there's a limited amount of these moon flowers that are the main ingredient, if I remember correctly. And Tessa is part of like this underground 
who is getting shipments of the medicine and distributing it to poorer people because well, it, the richer you are, the easier it is for you to get your hands on it. And we end up seeing things from both of their points of view and seeing how they're each handling the sickness that is spreading. That probably wasn't the best description of the book. So all of the summaries are always linked in the description below, but I, I loved book one. It's been a while since I've read it and there's a lot of books that I've read in between and I'm trying to remember the finer details without also giving away any spoilers. I can be very bad sometimes at summarizing books especially when they're complicated and I don't have the book in front of me. So yeah, either way, I, I really, really, really loved book one and I'm hoping I love book two. I love Bridget Kemmerer's writing, so it's really no surprise that this is on here. So here's hoping I love this one too. And then lastly, we have The Secrets of the Storm Forest by L.D. Lipinski. And this is the third book, and I think final main novel in the Strange Worlds travel agency. I believe it was announced that L.D. Lipinski was releasing another book for, I want to say like World Book Day or something in the UK. But I don't know whether that is like a bonus novel or whether it's like book four in the series. Either way, I know this is book three and I am very, very excited to read this. In this series, we're following Flick, who has just moved to a nude found and ends up stumbling across the Strange Worlds travel agency. And once there meets Jonathan, who is the person running this shop. And she soon learns that there are suitcases that can transport you to different worlds. And the magic in one of those suitcases is kind of going haywire. And if that world implodes or anything like that, it could affect Flick's world. So she kind of has to fix it with Jonathan's help. And I have loved this series. And I am so excited to be able to finally read book three. I read books one and two basically back to back. Like I read book one right before book two came out and then immediately ordered book two so that I could read book two and I've had to wait for book three. So I am so excited to be getting to this and I'm hoping I love it. And I just, yeah, I, I can't wait. So these, along with Stellar Loon, are my latest round of five-star predictions. I have really high hopes for all five of these. I'm expecting them all to be at least four stars, though ideally five. Like, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm thinking they're all going to be five, but I would be surprised if any of them got less than four. I'm just very, very excited for this round and to be able to get to some newer releases and some favorite series of mine. And yeah, I'm, I'm very, very stoked for this round of five-star predictions. I would love to know what is a five-star prediction that you hope to get to before the end of 2022. All of my social media is linked in the description below if you'd like to come chat with me. If you've made it this far in the video, leave me star emojis, like this video, and subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!